Hello, in this video, I'm going to be showing how to integrate a custom character with ALS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the Enhance assets. Um, so one of the Enhance characters, and I'm going to integrate it with ALS. Um, so I've previously covered how you can integrate ALS into your existing project. So those steps are the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate uh, that project, which I had. So essentially from that checkpoint, and I'm going to integrate one of the characters with ALS. So that's what we're going to be covering in this video. And this is the asset pack that I'm going to be integrating. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this was the output from the previous video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clone it. So uh, you can see I've already gone through the step once. Uh, so that's how I created uh, these document steps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all of these steps uh, with you. So we're going to see uh, there's going from zero to a fully working character with the ALS animations. So let's see how this is going. So there's our project duplicated. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add uh, the Crusader back to that project. So it was the community three. So let's go ahead and add that in. Um, so with that done, what we're going to have is the um, effectively the project with the integrated plugin available and um, we're gonna then have the character ready for us to work on so i'll just pause here while this loads okay so as you can see this project is basically completely empty so i've just added the the new character assets here so that's why you can see them but otherwise uh, it just had the plugin integrated so other than that it's an empty project so uh, what we're going to do is go through these steps then. So the first thing that I do is create a game mode for our game. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So it's a new blueprint and we're going to search for game mode and we're going to be extending the ALS game mode, right? Uh, and this is so that we can leverage some of the other um, functionalities from there. So let's go ahead and go inside it. So uh, we're going to basically keep everything uh, the same as it was from ALS, but we are going to be modifying this default pawn class. So we're going to do that a bit later after we created the character that we want to essentially play with, right? So uh, the next thing that we're going to be doing is creating a new map. So this is just covered next. So there's the new level. We're just going to create a basic new level. And let's go ahead and just save current level. Just save it as that. Um, just do it here. All right, so this is our new map. And what we want to do here in the world settings is update uh, the game mode override. So um, by default, we can see there's the ALS game mode. So that's what the plugin would normally use. Uh, but we created this my game mode and you can see that it set uh, these values for us um so we're essentially going to be updating this um where is it the default pawn class right so that's what we're going to be creating shortly so uh, let's go and look at the next steps okay so you can see there we updated the game mode override inside our world settings all right so now we're going to be preparing our characters um, I've just basically mentioned a bit of a hierarchy that you can create in your um, characters. So this is what I've done in some of my other projects. Uh, this is where you have a base player class, which is going to have some logic refactored. And then you can have your subclasses or um, different extensions of blueprints, you know, for the different types of characters that you can have, right? So for example, you can have a human male, human female, orc male, orc female, etc. right? So... Uh, it's up to you how you design these. Uh, this is just one suggestion. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and create all of these, um, but I will create a player base and then a human male character. So uh, let's go ahead and start some of that. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a new folder for characters. And here I'm going to create a new blueprint. And this is going to have... So we might be able to see it. Uh, it should be, I believe, this ALS character blueprint. So again, we're going to be extending from ALS. So there it is. And uh, this essentially 
it, it's going to be like a clone to the ALS base character. So uh, let's call it player. Okay, so if you go inside this, this is our normal ALS character. So we're going to be extending this and then creating our own characters from here, essentially. This will make a bit more sense as we go along, so do bear with me. So uh, the next thing that we're going to do is create the instances for our character. So the human male and the human female, for instance. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a new uh, folder for human. And for example, in here, you'll be able to do uh, male, female. So I'm just going to be populating one of them for now. Uh, but you'll get an idea of how you can create it. In terms of the parent class, we're going to be uh, using the player base that we've just uh, created, which extends the ALS character. So let's go ahead and do that. And this will be the human male. Let's just call it like this. Um, and you can see this again looks just like our ALS character. Okay, so let's go ahead and update the character's appearance. And what we're going to do is we'll go inside the stylized characters and you'll be able to see this is a bit of a class hierarchy here as well. So you can see inside the blueprints character, you've got the races options available and inside the races, you've got the genders as well. So sometimes you can have uh, your sort of base classes for the different races and potentially genders as well. And this is to refactor some logic. Um, so that's going to be a bit of an out of scope here. So I'll just uh, go on to this part. Um, so what we want from here is to extract uh, these skeletal meshes and materials. So I'm just going to go ahead and just copy them into here, right? So um, I'm not going to worry about the names. Um, to be honest, sometimes it actually copies the names correctly as well. So I'm not sure why it didn't. Uh, but again, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I'll go ahead and update these basic values here. All right, and uh, perhaps for now, I'll also just set this to none as well. So we're going to be updating the animation class for uh, these skeletal meshes. But the important thing is to make them nested inside the main mesh. So this mesh belongs to ALS. And you can see I've placed all of my other meshes inside here. So if you just had one, it'll just be one, right? And there are a lot of characters which will only have one skeletal mesh. This one um, has all of these different parts which are modular. So that's why there's so many. Um, but I can simply nest them inside this uh, mesh here. Okay, and now we can go and cross reference with the doc again. So let's see. So uh, we went ahead and we created the new character from player base. We then went and opened the um, Crusader pack. We took and copied all of these skeletal meshes into our uh, human male character. Uh, you can see that previously when I did the, the copy, I actually copied the names correctly. So not entirely sure why I didn't do that now. Uh, but again, it's not a big problem. Um, I also didn't have the issue with the floating, but again, that's not a big issue either. Uh, we'll be fixing that. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, working on the animation class. So uh, we'll go ahead and prepare the retargeting. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this. So this is my mesh uh, with the ALS character. So I can find what animation blueprint that one's using. So you can do that through here. And all I need to do is click retarget animations. So I think this is a UE5 feature. I'm, I'm not sure exactly which one, uh, but this is a, uh, this works pretty great now. So uh, if I do human male, I think it was full body. Um, so basically you need to find the skeletal mesh uh, for your character. So with this asset pack, I've got this full body uh, skeletal mesh and um, I'm able to create myself these retarget assets using this auto generate retargeter. So that actually works really well. Um, so, well, I'll go ahead and show how it works. So uh, inside here, perhaps I'll go ahead and create a new folder. Let's just call it, um, I don't know, let's call it. 
Okay, so there's the new retarget um, like assets uh, that are generated through this functionality. And as you can see, I'm able to then play some of the animations which were available for ALS. And you can see that it actually works really well. So um, you can see the two uh, skeletal meshes are overlapping from each other and you can see that it's um, working very well, right? So that's what we're going to be integrating with our animation blueprint. Okay, so let's go back to the document. So um, there we had the retargeter. So you can see that I've generated these um, assets now. Uh, I've played around and I tested the auto-generated retargeter. So what I'm going to do is create a new animation blueprint for my character. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I can close that, um, go back to here. Let's uh, just create a new animation blueprint. And uh, this will be for the human male. Okay. All right, and this one is going to be super simple. So you can see inside here, uh, all I'm going to do is retarget pose from mesh. So let's go ahead and find that. And in terms of the retargeter asset, uh, we've just generated this. So that that's what I can plug in there. And that is complete. So that is the animation blueprint that I can now use for my human male assets. So I can go back into here, just to click save and compile. And I'm going to select all of these skeletal meshes that I've just uh, introduced earlier. And now I can find the new uh, animation class. So I'm going to go ahead and search for the animation that I've just uh, created. And uh, you can see now it's uh, kind of working as we expect. I mean, the only problem is that we still see this character. So what we're going to do with this now is um, make it invisible. Uh, the only other thing that you'll also need to do is uh, update this to always tick pose and refresh bones. So you will need to do this uh, for this to work properly. And we're actually almost done. So uh, let's go back to the dock. So I think we just need to update this with uh, the game mode. So you can see uh, there's me making the mesh invisible and updating this um, always tick pose and refresh bones. So now, uh, as mentioned, we're just going to need to go back to our game mode and um, update our default pawn class. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So there's our game mode. Uh, so yeah, my game mode. And uh, there should be default pawn class. So we went and created a new character. Human male VP. So let's go ahead and do that. This should automatically be updated here. So there, there you can see. Um, so I can just go ahead and click play. Um, and there's our character. So it seems to be working as expected. And we can play with all of these different animations. Um, I even think, yeah, the rifle will work. Yeah. So everything seems to be working as expected because we're essentially reusing all of the animations from ALS and then we're retargeting it for our new character. And um, the retargeter works very well for at least this asset pack. I think it works for quite a lot of different asset packs, uh, particularly ones um, which were built using the UE4 mannequin. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, this was a bit of a tangent to my uh, main project, so I'm still working on some talents and stuff. Um, but yeah, thanks and see you next time. Bye.